But let me sort of change things up a bit. And at this point, I'm going to need to introduce complex numbers. Now, many of you, I'm sure, already remember what a complex number is. It is a, a number of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is called the imaginary unit. And we define it to be equal to the square root of negative 1. So, many people say, well, you, you can never take the square root of a negative. And that's not quite the truth. Um, for many years of our lives, we're told we cannot, we simply cannot divide by zero. But that's not quite true. There are complex numbers and imaginary numbers. It's a very fascinating world. Um, but getting back to this premise here, and so we're introducing complex numbers. Specifically for our cases, and I know you, you may think that I'm being a bit hypocritical now by limiting it in this case, but for our purposes, a will actually equal zero, um, for, for at least for this episode. At least as our as our input um, for the functions that we handle, and you'll see why that is. It it makes a lot more sense. But you see, even when we introduce i, even when we introduce imaginary numbers. Mathematics becomes a lot more elegant, and that is my main thesis. But more on that later. Uh, we have. Well, let's go back to the polynomial expansion for sine of x. You see that right here? And I'm going to rewrite that. Instead of saying sine of x, I'm going to say sine of the quantity ix. So just bear with me, there will be a very interesting correlation. Let's say we, we say sine of ix. So instead of saying just some any x value, we're going to make it a bit more specific, a sine of ix. So we're replacing x with the quantity ix is basically what we're doing in this polynomial expansion. So the end result of that becomes, well, you know, the first term is just x, so we can just replace that, replace that excuse me, with ix minus quantity ix cubed over 3 factorial plus quantity ix to the fifth over 5 factorial minus, and that goes on basically forever, but we can get the general gist of it just from the first few terms. So it's equal to ix, and after some simplification, we can say, all right, uh, i to the third, we know i is equal to the square root of negative one. From this, we know that i squared, if we were to square both sides, um, we simply get negative one. Now, i cubed equals negative one times i, so that's negative i, we're just multiplying each side by i, i to the fourth, therefore equals, well, it's, it's negative i times i, but uh, an easier way of thinking of it would be i squared, that quantity squared, right, uh, so i to the fourth equals i squared squared, and negative one squared through substitution, we can deduce that that's simply 1. Many of you have already seen this in Algebra 2, already completely familiar with complex numbers. This is simply a review. So i to the 4th equals 1, and this pattern continues, really. We just get i, negative 1, negative i, 1. i, negative 1, negative i, dot, dot, dot. So I'm just going to leave this... There we go, now we can see that. Okay, um, now we know i to the third, so i to the third is our coefficient of the second third, uh, the second term. And we know right here i to the third equals negative i, 
So we just say minus i x, and now now just this variable x has a cube on it. And so it's i quantity x to the third over three factorial. Uh, and then we have so i to the fifth. Well, i to the fourth is just one, and if we multiply that by i, that's simply i. So plus i x to the fifth over five factorial. And we continue uh, i to the seventh. Uh, well, we can find out that that's i x to the seventh over seven factorial. And i to the ninth, we know that's, that's simply plus i quantity x to the nine over nine factorial. And so this is the pattern that arises. We Ultimately, we find out that because every one of these exponents is an odd number, basically we find out that for each of these terms in this progression, in this series, um, there will be an i as a coefficient, at least in the numerator. I know we're dividing by some factorial, 3 factorial, 5 factorial, 7 factorial, but at least in the numerator, that i will be kept throughout the whole series. And that's very important. Because if you think about it, that's the only thing, the only useful number that we can actually factor out of this infinite series. So let's, well, let's do that. Let's see what we get. It's very interesting. We need to take i and factor it out of each one of these terms. So i, and then we get x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, and this is looking quite familiar to you, I'm sure. Uh, x to the ninth over 9 factorial plus dot dot dot. And this, by itself, is already our polynomial expansion for sine of x. So, for a moment now, let's consider the function e to the x. Now, uh, I've said before that this is a very, very fascinating function. Um, primarily because we know that the derivative of e to the x, believe it or not, is equal to e to the x. This is a very fascinating, provable point about e to the x, where if we take its derivative at any one point, its derivative will simply be able to, you know, equal to, excuse me, e to that x coordinate, which is amazingly fascinating in itself. But even more than that, let's say we took the Maclaurin series of e to the x. Well, we know it's f at 0. We've seen this formula before. f prime at 0 x. We substitute 0 for x to get our first term. We know that that is simply e to the 0, which is 1. Plus, now it's the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x. We know that. And we substitute 0 in for that, and we simply get 1 again. So 1 plus x, and we say plus. Uh, and then we say second derivative, well that's just e to the x once again. Substitute 0 for that, we get 1, because e to the 0 is 1 once again, and it's just x squared over 2 factorial. And you've probably noticed by now that really no matter how many times we differentiated the x, we'll just get e to the x, which is very good. And all we're doing with this Maclaurin series is substituting 0 for x in that case. So e to the 0 is always 1, which means all the numerators of all these terms will simply be 1 times x to the n for some natural number n. So it'll, it'll basically just be 1 times x to the n over n factorial equals 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, etc, etc, etc. Put simply, it is the sigma, the sum, I think I'll start with 0. From, from n equals 0 to infinity, of 
and here we have x to the n over n factorial. And this is one of the most basic, one of the most fundamental formulas, and it's very interesting. And so, on a more general note, simultaneously with the function e to the x, as we did with sine of x, we would actually like to substitute ix for x itself in this polynomial expansion. So now for e to the ix, we get 1 plus ix plus, and let's get our our um, exponentiation of i right here. And now we see i squared equals negative 1. We know that. Uh, so clearly this is negative 1 times x squared over 2 factorial after distributing the exponent. And now x to the third, well, it's really quantity of i x to the third. So we get minus i x to the third over 3 factorial. 